that you guys have heard. You always got to say it. So here's our disclaimer. Andrea and I are not doctors. We're not lawyers. We're here to talk about this wonderful plant, but everything that we say, nothing is legal advice. Nothing is medical advice. Please make sure that you talk to a doctor or a lawyer. If you can't plan on um, opening a cannabis business, starting a cannabis education business, um, or if you plan on changing anything in your health regimen, um, especially when using cannabis, not especially, but you know, especially if you're taking other medications and using things like CBD and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, um, now that we've got the disclaimer out of the way, just want to make sure that everybody in here is 21 or what is it for you guys, Canada? 19 all over the place. You know how we ask this every time I watch Melanie's video. It is 18 in Alberta, 21 in Quebec and 19 everywhere else. Just to be confusing. Well, we're just as confusing. So as long as it's legal in the place that you're in at the age that you're at, you can be here and we can talk about all this stuff. Um, I think that's all we have for disclaimers. Is that right? Am I missing anything? All right. No. All right. Great. Um, we would love to know who read the book. Hands up. It's okay. No shame. Every single page, every single word. I'm gonna put down my hand. Oh, I'm so close. <laughs> no. Okay. That's okay. It's okay. We can keep talking about this. It is, it was a lot. It was a lot for a month to take in. Um, so we just want to open it up. However much you read, whatever stood out to you, even if you read 10 pages of this book, honestly, you're going to have some stuff to talk about. So even if you didn't read the whole thing or you just got started, feel free to chime in. Okay. This is, this book club is brought to you by the Cannabis Coaching Institute. And we're featuring currently our newest program, the Certified Cannabis Educator Program. Um, we are very, very excited about this program. You can join us anytime. As soon as you sign up, you get started, you go through the Cannabis Science Educator Training with Andrea, and then you get handed off to me and we start making content and building your business as a cannabis educator. It's our shortest eight week program. So you can get started and complete it within two months and be out there writing and creating content, making videos, doing workshops, all those kinds of things. Um, it's really exciting because we're starting to see that our first one was a few months ago, and now we're starting to see all that stuff be created and brought out into the world. So if you know you want to do something like this and you're not already with us at CCI, I know I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces here today, um, but if you haven't already joined us, we invite you to join us for CCEP for this next round. Like Lou, yes. <laughs> Lou did it. Lou did it. <laughs> Lou made content. Awesome. All right, Andrew, do you want to kick us off here and talk a little bit about the book? Yeah, for sure. I'm really happy to see everybody here. And I was just saying to Corinne before we started recording, I'm really curious for this conversation and about how I feel like we're all just going to be like, ah, the whole time. And I'm down for that. Like, I am ready to be upset about this book. Um, so this book, is, if you haven't read it, Smoke Signals, it's written by Martin Lee. He is the director of Project CBD, which if you haven't already heard about it, it's one of the most reputable um, resources on the internet to find quality information about how cannabis and CBD work in the body. And he has given this really detailed history of the legacy, if that's the word, of prohibition in the United States, cannabis prohibition in the United States. And for me, it was fascinating just to watch how we've been using this plant for, you know, thousands and thousands of years. And then in a blink, we fucked it up. Oops, we really <laughs> screwed it up um, big time. So it is 400 pages or 22 hours on the Audible version of it, um, followed by about 80 pages of sources and bibliography. Um, and I believe everyone who is working um, in this space um, or loves the plant, or if you hate the plant, I think all of those people should read this book. And I think we're just going to dive right in with questions. Is that great, Corinne? Okay, perfect. So please feel free to like raise your actual hand, your digital hand, um, put it in the chat if, if you want um, for any and all of these. We'd really like to have it be a discussion. So... <laughs> Before you started, before before you read this book, what did you know about this subject? What did you know about cannabis prohibition in the States? And how different is your perception now? Go ahead, Lisa. Um, I, I've heard a lot of, of this history from 
my favorite weed podcast, Great Moments in Weed History. Those guys are so much fun and so educational. And um, so I was familiar with a lot of it, but it kind of, you know, gave me a lot more details. Um, mostly what I wanted to say, though, was to respond to everyone's outrage that I think, you know, we're in the position to educate people now. Um, I work in high school, so, and, and I live in a very conservative county. Like, New Jersey is a, a blue state, but my county is like, we're like the northern tip of Appalachia in, in like our, how conservative it is. And so when I say I'm working with cannabis, people are like, oh, you know, oh, I get that so much. And I really try to educate people. Um, and I also, yeah. Okay. So I, I think, you know, as can, you know, cannabis coaches and, and as literate people. Um, so in response to the outrage, educate. Beautiful. From one teacher to another. I agree, right? Like that's what we're all about. I love that you can take that, take that and ground us from the beginning on maybe like, hey, Andrea, just because you feel like being mad, like <laughs> you don't have to be. We can look at this in a different light and be responsible for how this goes forward. Well, that's from having a lot of therapy about anger issues. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. John, did you want to weigh in too? I saw your hand earlier, I think. And then we've got uh, Diane and Kirsty. I don't know if you see the visual hands. Okay. Yeah, I, I just thought his his coverage of the medical component in this was the clearest and the most focused and understandable I think I've I've read anywhere. And you know, I promptly uh, had to. <clears throat> borrow parts of it for my class <laughs> for my students to have it because you know that they need to they need a good understanding of it and just how he just does that is really good and I, yeah and and there's you know there's always the the lot the lack of the, what we've lost in 80 years with this plant from a fiber perspective from a grain perspective from a plant breeding perspective um you know we'll never get it. I mean, we'll, we'll never get that back. And, you know, the high THC breeding directions have, you know, they, they have screamed of course. And, um, you know, it's a totally different animal than what I might've known as a youngster, but, but, um, from the industrial side of things, we, we could be so much farther along and we're just not. And that's, that's, that's just the saddest part yet, but but it was, uh, he's, he's a very, very good writer. Oh my goodness. He's such a good writer. Thank you. I saw in the chat, John, you teach at, you teach cannabis at a university, eh? I and do. this is still one of the most impactful books on the, on the medicinal side of cannabis that you've read. It, at least in terms of clarity, you know, I mean, there are, I have lots of other resources that I, I give students, um, it's a, it's a five week short course for one credit. And I try to draw, I try to draw in nursing students and uh, plant and soils people, um, those kinds of people to take the course. And, and then I do, um, I'm also doing a, a hemp short course for uh, CBD growers. So I, that's the extension hat. And so I got the teaching hat, the extension hat, and then I do research too on uh, trying to make production more sustainable in the, in the uh, hemp production game. So it's, thank you uh, so much for being here. This is oh, a great so perspective to have. Yeah. Thank oh, you. So thank you. Yeah. You All right. Um, Diane, what did, what did you know about this before and how, how do you feel about the history of it now? Where do I start? Right. Um, <laughs> So I actually, when I started getting into cannabis, this was the first book I picked up. So there's lots of pages. So I read it once and it, of course, the anger, everything, it sat there while well. then we had it for book club and I'm like, oh good, I get to read it again, which was good. Um, but then I echo uh, everyone else's sentiments about the anger and that anger itself doesn't do any good if you don't channel it into action, right? So, 
So it's a good thing to read it twice. But um, I have to say the ups and downs that someone mentioned, I have wanted or I'd love for someone else to just put it in a chart, you know, like a get boom, 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 boom. It's like uh, just to see visually and, so, and maybe someday I'll do this just how it has gone and if there's anything that even compares in our history well yeah there are some uh other atrocities out there but um I just think that would be really interesting to put it in a train like that or a chart like that um this I have to say started my relationship with Henry Anslinger and for never having met the man I, I have so much emotions around him <laughs> that um, I can't, I can't, I know you all understand. So uh, yeah, I just, I just, I don't understand it. I know he wasn't alone in that day and age, but um, it's really beyond me, but I just totally detest the man. I almost want to look up his family. Isn't that awful? Talk about therapy. I need to go get some therapy for that. But um, uh, there were parts of the book that really helped me with that anger and to look at other things. And page 261, so uh, Dennis Perron, Perron, you know, everyone knows him, where he talks about, um, where he says, uh, the Puritans and their disgust of pleasure gave rise to the haunting fear that someone somewhere may be happy. And then he goes on to say that he believes all marijuana use is medical. And isn't that true? I mean, why does someone grab a glass of wine or do whatever or go for a run? I mean, you want to feel that. And to me, that was really eye-opening for me. And I, I just kind of wanted to hang on to that thought there too. So, um, and I have other thoughts, but I don't want to, don't want to take up all the time, but yeah, great, great, great book. Thank you so much for sharing, Diane, especially from someone who's read it twice. So thanks for making us feel like just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. That's fantastic. And I can't believe this is the first book that you read on cannabis. Like that's, I wish it was the first book I read on cannabis. Like I, yeah. I'm a little bit jealous, Diane, but I do. I also, somebody just put in the chat about someone peeing on Anslinger's grave. And I think, you know, if we all want to get together sometime and just like, I mean, you can ship yours from Canada. I'm sure he's buried here. So we'll just, you know, <laughs> This is going on YouTube tomorrow and we're talking about shipping my urine across the border <laughs> so that you can pour it on. Like, we're going to get, we're going to get. Put this on things. YouTube. All right. <laughs> Christy, go ahead. Rest. Let the dead rest. Right. <laughs> Full yeah, I did not read all 5 billion and 74 trillion words. Um, I would love this done in a Netflix or a picture book. Um, but kind of to piggyback what Diane said, I did kind of find myself too going, I'd like to just kind of make a timeline. It's so funny that you said that, Diane, because I did. I love that flow of it. So to kind of bullet point a lot of those, and yes, as somebody who is pretty deep in cannabis and have been obsessed with it for a decade now, and I'm a regular user, I'm a certified cannabis coach. Thank you, Andrea and Corinne. So, and I, I pretty deep dive into this stuff. I did, this is kind of, again, to what John said, what a great just a history. And I think those of us that coach or help people, you know, you do get those people, those clients, those friends and family that want the deep dive. Like I literally found myself saying like, this is some history channel shit for cannabis. So I do, I think for those people that don't just want to kind of read CBD and high dose THC and everything, and really kind of want to understand this. And then again, to piggyback what you guys have all said, how did we screw this up so bad? How was this something that was doing great medicinal qualities for people for thousands of years. How did we just screw this up so hard? And it does, it makes me, and I know the people like, you know, just empowers you even more. We need to change the freaking story. It's a bullshit story. We need to correct and educate and let people get back to the magic of this planet. Just that's it. Yes, thank you. 
<laughs> my job. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hopefully this is getting you all fired up in the way that I think so many of us were. I was just telling Andrea before we got on the call, like, yeah, I can't go into a room without talking about this stuff. Like it, I'm unbearable at this point. I'm unbearable every book club, but this one in particular, I was just, I keep walking into my family's house being like, oh, this is bullshit. This is all bullshit. You know, like, like that guy. And I was like, well, calm down. I'm like, no, I will not calm down. And she, she said it to me yesterday. She's like, look, you got work to do then. Like if you're so fired up, that means you got work to do. And I really, I hope we're all taking that to heart as well. Um, okay, Olga. And then we have one more question but before we go on to you, Olga. I did actually just in this moment while I was, while we were talking about this timeline, I Googled it and found one from PBS. That's pretty succinct. It's not very visual. It still could use some pictures, right, Kirstie? So um, maybe somebody wants to make an infographic, but it is actually, I mean, obviously uh, way more succinct than reading 400 pages. It's a really nice overview. So if you do have people um, in your world or who you're working with that are still feeling bad about using cannabis or who are experiencing some stigma or experiencing things from their family, it might be beneficial to sit down and have a quick overview of, hey, look, I understand why you feel that way about this plant. We've all been taught to feel that way, right? I was part of the D.A.R.E. program. I was told to narc on my parents, you know, so we've all been, we've all grown up with some interesting stuff um, that, that changes, you know, some of it's lodged in there, right. And your parents might, and so on and so forth. And so giving a miniature history lesson as a coach or as an educator can be really, really powerful. Cause like you've all seen, it's just impossible when you look at the history and the scientific facts about this plant, it's impossible to have it. You're like, no, nope. It's so it's, it's magical. So, <laughs> okay, go ahead, Olga. So I haven't read the book yet, but I have ordered it in order for me to read it. And um, I, I wanted to come in tonight and, and see what you guys were all about and check you out and and um, have an interesting conversation. And it's so interesting, you know, I'm finding in my own life and most of the topics that I have um, that I talk about are usually death, sex, now weed. Um, and let us not include, let us make sure we include poop because that's a really important aspect of human quality of life. Um, I just, I find it really interesting that there's these, um, I think as we, uh, let me see if I can grab my, my thoughts. As we collectively elevate our consciousness, one of the things that I think is happening is that, oh, I'm going to get romantic on you the echo of the past is resonating with some of us who are especially willing to push the envelope within our own circles, because I see still a lot of whiteness in the, in the story that oftentimes paints us in, um, in the transgressor and the one for profit. Anyways, that's a whole other thing. It's just so interesting. I love talking about this stuff because it's so much more than what people think it is. You know, I'm, I'm, as an educator, I'm trying to, number one, include the conversation about uh, THC because there's so much in the CBD that I'm like, you know, too far left is still too far, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the book. <laughs> Look forward to some more interesting things to say. Awesome. I love that. I think you're going to... I I feel like you're going to love it. We'll talk about it. You can hear what everybody else says at the end when we ask if everybody loved it or not, if, or if we love to, we love to be mad about it. Um, we're going to move on to the next question really quick here. Okay. Ooh, I like this one. Um, what was surprising about the facts contained in this, in this book? Was there anything that you learned that you were like, oh my goodness, like I had no idea that that was a thing. Was there one thing that just stands out for you? I'll just start with, for me, it was the Elvis stuff. <laughs> can't get over it guys jennifer do you do you want to share some of a surprising fact that you learned in the book yeah. well you know it's kind of i wasn't prepared for that angle but i think what i was about to say kind of fits in because the last line i i got to chapter three and i feel like i've read a huge book already like and I, this is, you know, this is a challenge for me because I don't typically take on these type of books, but I feel like I just have to. And um, the last line was basically um, that the word ganja is Sanskrit for knowledge. And that moment, <laughs> like, you know, it was just such a part of this whole um, universe for me with cannabis that, you know, 
this it really truly is the truth plant and, and it, it is it has so it brings so much knowledge and for me in my life since I was young I you know this is, was introduced to me at 16 thankfully um you know it has brought such a sense of of knowledge and information and seeking more and understanding the truths and that's what they were doing was was suppressing that right they didn't want us to have it that's how you gain power and that oppression and that you know the racism and the injustices and the it's it's so much it's so much um but it all comes down to that knowledge you know and the indigenous people have a, you know a, a connection to you know the universe in a way that to me is like pure knowledge pure you know uh core to our existence and humanity. So um, so I don't know if I just kind of went way off, but um, that's where I'm left right now. And, and, and I'm trying to take, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do this as almost therapy because I feel like I have felt so much of this my whole life and, and seeing it and, and um, now putting all the pieces of the history together. Um, and then I wanna, yeah, come up with something that can be a way to relay this to people because you know racism still is so thick even right now period end of story so to even talk about this with a group of white people is really uncomfortable for me and i want to say it and i want to blast it but it doesn't you know you have to be open to allow everybody to get there in the moment they need to get there so anywho i don't know if that's something that anybody else wants to kind of feedback on but that's what i'm left with right now yeah, thank you for sharing, Jennifer. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of challenging topics. It was not just one thing. It's so wrapped up in everything else. It's like, as soon as you start like pulling on that, uh, that string, it's just like everything just starts to unravel. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And also thank you for pointing out um, the ganja knowledge piece. That's so, that's what a beautiful fact. Um, who else has another surprising fact that, that really like when you think about this book, you're like, I can't believe I learned this in this book. Anybody? Was this anybody's first time hearing about the Jamaica studies and all of that? I was just curious. So there was somebody, a few people's first time. Yeah, I remember the first time hearing about all that. I was like, wait a second, what? We had this really complex study for all this time and no one said a word? <laughs> We're just being like, oh, all right. Anybody else, anything that's popping up? Otherwise we can just move on. I wanna pop something in like, <laughs> I literally screamed out loud, like, what the actual F? I can't find it right now, but there's a quote in there that just made it so prescient to me, where it was about how the government had decided to invest in the war on drugs instead of investing in the war on cancer, when the American government could see in their very first studies how beneficial it was. And yet we have, not we, they, they have gone on like, a, a literal rampage in order to decimate lives by criminalizing it and also decimate lives by people not having access to even think about using cannabis as a medicine because they are so scared. And oh, okay, I'm done, but that is enraging. That was, yeah, it just hit me right in the face. Hmm. Yeah, I think one of the quotes for me kind of along that line that I still feel like we're all experiencing right now, and those of us who are educators see it every single day, but I think we, Andrew and I talked about this earlier, so maybe I might butcher it, but the, um, a confused person is a more controllable person, a confused population is the most controllable population. And I think from that perspective, when you think about, I'm, I'm always, I, during this book, and who's with me on this, I was like, how did this take so long? We, it was just like mounting evidence. That, and you're just like, how is this so slow? All these passionate people, they would make these huge moves forward and then it would go again. And I'm like, but it keeps coming back to that idea for me, because even if now it's not completely vilified, right? And, and people are starting to, oh, well, it's legal in these states and people are using it for this. And the information is still going out there. The common narrative is still like, 
this could be a tricky drug. And I, I think Olga just spoke to that, like that THC part, it's still scary. THC is still a scary thing. Um, you know, it's still there. And I think people are still confused. And now with more products and all that stuff, it's like a different level of confusion, all these ingestion methods and all this information. So I think we, we, again, as educators, as coaches, I have to keep that in mind when we're talking to everyone. They're so confused. They're so overwhelmed. There's a lot of new information coming their way all at once as soon as they get curious about this plant. So how can we make it more simple for people and how can we stand in that and, and provide as much information for the general public as we can um, That's that dismantles that confusion? You know, how can we get, because like we're the nerds who read the 400 page books, right? And so we have to like be really good at like figuring out how to make this bite size and be able to, to give it back to everyone else. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead, Diane. It is easier to be in ignorance. It's bliss, right? It is. Yeah. Um, I'm going to mess this up. I should have made a, marked it somewhere, but I think it was around the Ginsburg era um, the gentleman who wrote One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and where he was working in the, um, I guess you call it a hospital for psychiatric people and what they were, the experiments they were doing, plus then the, um, the agents that came I see I'm getting all mixed up, but there was an experiment where the government was doing this to and using psychiatric patients. Am I getting this wrong? Because they wanted to use it on prisoners of war to get them to talk. Do you guys remember that part? And uh, he went on to write One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest from this, his experience in this hospital and them using the drugs and cannabis and everything and, and their only experience they um, they got from the experiment is, you know, that it didn't, you know, it just made people happy and hungry and it, you know, all of this other stuff. But I'm like, it's one thing if the government was completely ignorant, but the, you know, obvious, and maybe I was naive before I read this book because I looked at the government as they're there to do good things for us, right? We have to trust them. And it wasn't just about cannabis that I was angry by the time I got finished. It's like, I don't trust anything that comes out of their friggin' mouths mm -hmm. from now on. And I was the little girl who was so gullible about everything, Catholic school for 12 years. Yeah, fine, whatever. Do you think... <laughs> everything has been shot out the window and it's I'm like nope don't trust you don't believe you don't so it this book hasn't just changed my mind about cannabis it just did I did a 180 about everything and you know that's it's a tough thing to face that in your life and think what the hell who am I if I'm not all of these beliefs I had or this trust I had in people and now it's not there anymore. And so it, it's, you know, it's an emotional thing to read. You're angry. You're looking at how it affects your life. How it is, what they did to people. It's sad, you know. What can I say? I know I'm preaching to the choir, <laughs> but I do want to say that in my training, so. Everyone knows, most people know I'm in Idaho where the low, low level of, we don't, the only thing we get is CBD with absolutely no, no, no THC whatsoever, not even the 0.3. Um, so my whole point is educating people and part of the training program I'm putting together, the very first component of it is, is on the social history of cannabis. So I'm saying, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna teach you about the plant the botany, the medical aspects. I'm not teaching you anything until you know how we got to this part. And once you understand that, you can make your own deduction how you wanna go forward, but you need to know how we got to where we are right now and understand that. And it's really hard after reading this book to compile all of that into a small training for people where they can get the gist of it all. And uh, I keep editing and editing and editing. <laughs> I'll get there, but I, 
I think it's one of the most important things for people who are learning about can cannabis to know. So um love that, Diane. And I think it's, but it's kind of interesting what some of you have said already. It's like you can start to see why they're so afraid, right? I mean, these are seeds of dissent. This is un this is take, I mean, you guys I, every nod and every head in the in the chat was or sorry, in the video screens was nodding along with like, yeah, now I don't trust anything they say anymore. Now I can't believe any of it because this was such nonsense and they've been so terrible to the citizens of this country, the sick of this country. The, the, I mean, like, it's just, it, it's one injustice after another. It's just stacked on top of each other in our own in our own nation, right? We've done it to our, not we, I, I think it's so weird. Uh, Andrea corrected herself, but we like saying this is like, we did it, like we're Nixon and Elvis, you know? But, um, <laughs> sorry, I can't stop. Um, but it, it really, I think is going to be really challenging for people. And I love that you start there, Diane, because when I started, I was like, oh yeah, we all get that. We all get that that's messed up. We need to know about the science. We need to know about this part. And I was so heavy on that. And I think that I didn't really fully understand how many people needed to, to go along this ride because, you know, like when I was, I was just fortunate to be around a lot of people when I was younger who were like, no, look at what the government has done. And like, exposes this information a lot over time, but most people like in my parents' generation, you know, like none of it, it's all brand new. And I watched, you know, as a lot of people still like cling to that when I'm like, no, it's me look, it's medicine. They're like, yeah, yeah. It helps your back pain, whatever. Wink, wink, what, you know, cheech and chomp. I'm like, wait, what? No, that's not what's happening here. Um, and the reason that you might think that is because you kind of missed out on all this stuff because it's been buried under the rug because the government didn't want you to know about it. And then you sound like that guy, you know? And so I was kind of, it's, it's interesting hearing you say that because it does take some nuance and to be able to show, to share this information, I think in a way that's succinct, that's impactful. Cause how you, if you leave some stuff out, is it as much as us kind of getting hit in the face with it for like 400 pages or however many pages we got through over and over again? I think that's kind of was part of the experience that we got. It was like, Whoa, Whoa. Oh my gosh. There's so much of it. And that, I think that makes it impactful. I don't think, you know, giving a, one or two of these at a time does that same thing. Um, but I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about that and how you think, you know, we can go forward and, be having these conversations. If you have any ideas of um, how we can make this impactful and say a shorter conversation with someone, a short interaction, because um, I would love if anybody has any ideas. Lisa, do you want to chime in? You're on mute. You're... There I am. Um, I had my hand up about something somebody said back, but to, uh, oh, about, you know, what part of the book we were most interested in. And, but this kind of dovetails with what Corinne said. Um, I uh, am a, I'm prone to depression and I, I, cannabis is my medicine now. And it's like the best medicine I've used in, in my life uh, for that. And uh, so I was really interested when, in the beginning of the book, he talks about this uh, Dr. Moreau, who um, was a psychiatrist and actually wrote a book about cannabis and mental illness. And I've been looking for such a book. Like I've been looking for information, like who's doing what I'm doing. And um, Corinne, actually I mentioned um, Tammy Sweet's book to you, uh, The Holistic Guide to Cannabis or something. Yeah, and she has a section in there about cannabis and depression and she describes using it exactly the way that I sort of evolved into using it myself, which is like, you know, was very nice. Um, and she also talked about, she just used language that like I've thought of, uh, where I feel, I feel like it puts me in a different um, groove in, in my head, you know? So um, I said to my husband earlier, I, I might have to like write a memoir about cannabis and depression because it's not out there. And so that would be my contribution to um, education because um, it, it, it's such great medicine for depression. Yeah, okay. Pretty please, will you pretty please write that book? Because like you said, it's not out there. So it'd be really nice. I have a bookstore and so it'd be great to have one of those. Yeah, I, um, I, a name popped into my head. I would call it Lifted, a memoir of cannabis and depression. What do you think? <laughs> Thumbs way up, claps. Great. Okay. 2023 book club. 
Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Lisa. John, you have your hand up as well. Um, yeah, I wanted to follow up just a little bit with what Jennifer had said, because when I teach the class, I, I start about one, I always try to kind of blend the science and the, the, the production of it. And so I start with where it came from and, and then I kind of weave where, where, how it moved from Central Asia across the, you know, across the globe down to, down to India and, and then into Mesopotamia. And one of the things that's really interesting is that, as we know, you know, that part of the world was, you know, has been over, you know, countries have overrun other countries and uh, for, for, for eons and eons. And when, when they did that, they would take, uh, one country would sort of adopt some of their theology and some of their, their practices. And so, and, and one of the things that I teach in the class is that, um, that previously the, there was the garden of a Denny, not the garden of Eden. We kind of, we kind of took over the garden of a Denny and, and in the garden of a Denny, there was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and the tree of knowledge was the cannabis plant as Jennifer was saying, and when, you know, but they weren't, they weren't not, they weren't told that they couldn't have it. They were told, and, and, in in that version, um, Adam and Eve, um, took, partook of, or, uh, of the tree of knowledge and actually became gods and when, in, you know, and so it's just fascinating that we have kind of come around the other way to make everything so, um, you know, that's, I mean, it, you know, and then I try to lead them on to sort of all of the cultures where the feminine gods, goddesses were celebrated for this plant, Asherah, Freya, you know, um, all, all, you know, um, Shishat, all of those great female goddesses that were, were the goddesses of, of this plant. And then when the paternalistic um, patriarchal religions came into play, how they just slammed it down and they were, you know, you couldn't have it, even though it was used originally in Judaism, um, in the, um, in the holy of the holies, um, the, the high priests got to take advantage of it, but nobody else. So the high priests, I love that. Um, so it's just, I, I agree with you, Jennifer, it, it is, it is the, it is the plant of knowledge and um, and it's just amazing what we have done to slam it, you know, for too many, too many years, but I thought that'd be fun to share a little bit. That's awesome. Thank you so much, John. Yeah. Andrea uh, said something along the lines of this. She doesn't know about the female goddesses of cannabis. Like we need more books. Come on guys. Like where are you guys? Come on, get it. Get, okay. You got to leave here and go start writing your own book. Um, I really appreciate that. You know, I've heard something recently too, that I've meant, meant to go down the rabbit hole. Maybe some of you can chime in on this, but the, the biblical, um, the cannabis and how that was mistranslated to calamus, which makes no sense as an herb because not to hate on calamus or anything, but it's just, okay. You know, it's not, it's not like a holy oil kind of like sacrament. Well, this is going to knock your socks off and cure all your stuff kind of thing. And I'm like, but cannabis, like that seems that translation is close. So um, I think it is, it's really interesting that when we start looking at some of those ancient histories and even going back, um, the first thing I think I got mad about, poor Andrea, she's had to hear about how mad I've been all month, but was it the hemp seed, throwing hemp seeds at brides and grooms and that kind of thing. I was like, I'm going to start throwing hemp seeds at everybody again. Nobody's getting any hemp seeds thrown. <laughs> and so I'm like, I mean, just all these um, you know, we can be mad about the politics and the way this all unfolded, but I, I also feel like these cultural losses of how cannabis was so interwoven in all of our culture, you know, every culture, every culture almost, you know, had some, a use for it, or that was really beautiful and specific to that particular culture. And the way they used it was completely different and said something about the culture and what they valued about the plant because it's so dynamic. Um, so I do, I, I really appreciate you saying that. I, I, you know, it's, bullshit. <laughs> it's beautiful. And it's bullshit. And I love, I love that kind of positive stuff though, that we can look at like culturally and, and religions and all this stuff. Uh, especially when you're talking to people who are, who feel like this plant is separate from, from that a religious worldview, um, that it is, you know, the devil's lettuce, the, like a demonic plant, something that still makes you kind of go crazy and go to hell. Um, so 
that's an uplifting thing to leave on. Go ahead, Debbie. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, a couple of things. One of the things when you were talking about how to do, we do little mini bites of talking to people about this, having grown up during the whole hippie era and all of that stuff, what I find is that everybody has a different level of how they think about this. So I always find it's best if you just ask them, what do you oppose about cannabis? Before you ever start a conversation with them so that at least you know where they are and you have an idea of what they're looking for. Um, the other thing that I've learned is that when you're talking about mindset with someone that's really opposed to someone that's sick, is that if you will ask them, what do you have against your, your partner, your person, your wife, whatever, what do you have against them feeling better? And start the conversation that way is try to show them how they can feel better by allowing their spouse or their significant other or their friend, whoever, to experience this and kind of take them down that road. I find that to be very helpful. I love it, Debbie. Yeah. Always leading with questions. I think that's just always, it's always the best because like you said, no matter what it is, whether they're opposed or they're excited or they're curious, there's no way for you to know. Right. And it's easy for all of us, again, the nerds who try to read 400 book page books, um, you know, to just be like, Oh my God, I'm so excited about this. Oh my God, fuck Elvis, you know, and those, just like dumb on people. Um, but I love that. That insight is so important, Debbie. Thank you. Well, when you meet them where they are, you're going to always be able to make some progress with them. So it's important to try to do that. Yeah. And we learn so much more, right? I mean, like we're, we still have to know not what we're up against, but like what we're all dealing with in terms of where people are at. Um, we can stay in our little bubble and we can talk to each other all the time about all this cool stuff. Um, or we can go out and we can have our neighbors ask us if CBD is going to be addictive for their son, you know, who's in his thirties, you know, and like, it, just like all um, sorts of stuff that, you know, maybe we wouldn't hear otherwise. So I love that. We got to engage in our communities and people who aren't necessarily a hundred percent on board. Right. Right. I want to pop in a quick story just because it just happened today that one of our students, their action step was to go talk to somebody about the endocannabinoid system. So they told their sister, like we have this thing called the endocannabinoid system. And the sister said, and what makes you think that's true? Like as if this was come, like she had like totally made it up kind of thing. And the student told her, like, here's my reasons. And by the end of the conversation, the sister had like, had like a spark, a new, something to hold on to there. And sometimes that's, that's all we can ask for is just a little spark to maybe change the way that they're thinking about it a little bit and then a little bit more and then a little bit more. I mean, Andrea, don't, I think you told me this story once that the first time you heard me talking about it, you were like, this lady is like talking about how weed is, goes in your body and your body makes weed or whatever. <laughs> like, I told my husband, I was like, she is bad shit crazy. She just wants to use weed and she's making up a system to tell me about it. Great. That's <laughs> right. But hey, I remember the first time I heard of it and could not pronounce it or I read, had read it and I was like, no. That's not a thing, mostly because I don't want to learn how to say that word. <laughs> All right. Yeah, go ahead, Jennifer. I almost forgot. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to kind of, since John mentioned me and directed at me, I, it, it really did speak to me actually what you just said. And I just want to acknowledge what an amazing, unique perspective you have. And I love hearing educators that have that type of information that they're sharing with with the world and with the youth in the, in, in the world. Cause that's just, that's beautiful. So thank you for sharing it with us and thank you for doing what you do. That's all, thank you. All right, let's move on to the next question. And this question is like, what questions do you still have regarding the, the history of cannabis? Like kind of where can we go from here? How can we, how can we elucidate this better? How can we, I'm not sure that I need to have a better understanding of the history of prohibition in the United States, because I feel like I have a really good one. But what what can we do with this to kind of move forward? Again, talking about instead of just being angry the whole time, how can we take this? Um, I'll share that I started incorporating 
um, a very brief history of the prohibition of cannabis into workshops about a year and a half ago. Um, and for me, the big eye opener has always been the endocannabinoid system. And I always felt like once you knew about the ECS, you can't be stigmatized about the plant. And I noticed when I started putting in this piece about the history, how many people that was the most impactful thing for. They didn't really care so much about the endocannabinoid system, but the fact that a bunch of white dudes had decided that this was not going to be okay for, you know, millions of people for decades, that really grabbed them. So um, back to... I forget who said it, um, about like meeting them where they're at and finding Debbie about finding out what it is, um, that they're really concerned about and, um, diving deep there is, that's how I want to go. <laughs> who else? How else? Where, what do you, what else do you need to know? And where can you go with this? I know for the Canadians, we need to know more about the history of of cannabis in Canada. Uh, our history is apparently very steeped in anti-Chinese racism. That's how and, we decided to go forth. And from some, some academic intellectual awareness in my own experience, having been born and lived in a communist country, uh, we used to have a joke. And the joke was, you know what the difference between communism and democracy is? In democracy, you know you're being lied to. <laughs> that was our joke. <laughs> which was to reveal like, and they're both the same. So I think we have to understand the intertwined history will never, it, it's almost impossible for, for it to be unraveled. So you know the truth, whatever that word may, means, because if you dive deeper into perceptions, how history is made, power of history, where are you seeking your history? If it's in the books, it's gonna be a privileged history. If it's in the songs, and the stories and the cloth, then it's gonna be a different kind of history. So how do we weave this new knowledge, grieve the anger that we have towards what we didn't know about? You know, um, I'm still overcoming my own grief of understanding the Canadian history, the atrocities at the hands of the most vulnerable. And, the continuation of that. But that's another story for another fight. Um, yeah, boom. <laughs> we need to keep sharing the story, inviting people in and making space for others. I don't wanna be in front, I wanna be beside you. This is how I lead my client families through the transition and end of life. It includes cannabis, it's gonna include psilocybin, it's gonna include awareness, right? You want to leave on a good note? Well, you may have to finish some unfinished business in this lifetime. And we're always more aware of the, the pain of, of our humanity. Well, I've spoken. <laughs> You've <laughs> spoken speech. and we are listening. Thank yeah, you. Like, cool. <laughs> hey, yeah, let's and do that. Well, the white and the white and red, right? Because that's, that's me, white and red. Thank you, Olga, for sharing. Who else? Let's chime in here. Or just any thoughts as we come towards the end of this. Parting thoughts. What stood out to you? A quote that you want to share? I'd like to speak to that first, that just really quick, that um, how we move forward. And because it, it already came up, you know, we've already talked about this a few times is that, and Olga, I love what you said that it's like, it's like, what's in the books? It's in these kinds of books that somebody mentioned earlier. This is a very different type of book than, um, than the books that it do include stories, right? Yeah, very, very different types of books. Um, and, and then, you know, Lisa, you're talking about sharing your experience. And I really do think that there's an element of right now for those of us who really love this work and really love this plant and know how much it can help to create those resources for people. It doesn't matter there. You can find a way to create a resource, no matter what you're into. If you don't like writing, there's video. If you don't like video, there's podcasts. If you don't like pod I mean, there's, there's so many ways to share this information. And there are going to be some people that, you know, when John mentioned earlier, like this was actually the best way for me to learn this information. It was the easiest, most comprehensive, um, you know, thing, um, or simpler, clear. Um, you know, for me, that was like Dr. Bonnie Goldstein, right. And, and these people with different voices and different ways of explaining things. And you all have that, 
you all have your own experience. Diane, you have this experience, this, this radical change, like that you thought everything was one way. And then you started learning about cannabis and you realized everything was this other way. And now you're living in this place where cannabis is still, I mean, we're still fully locked in prohibition, right? That story in and of itself and being able to share that with people and, and create these resources for them in your voice with your story, I believe is so important and so powerful. It's not enough for us to share facts because, you know, we talk about this a lot in CCI. So pardon me for those of you who hear us and feel we're a broken record, but information does not equal transformation. There's an element that is absolutely necessary um, that is not just in facts, right? And not just in like the timeline of the history. Um, so I really would love to empower all of you to start writing, start creating, start making videos, start sharing them with people. I know it can be scary at first for those of you who haven't done it. For those of you who have gone through the process and like CCEP, you see that once you rip that bandaid off, you're like, oh my gosh. And then I heard this thing. I want to share that. Oh my gosh. I heard this thing. I want to share that. Right. Um, so I really would just love for you guys to, you know, to take that responsibility, share your stories, share your experience, share the anecdotes of people, your clients, the people, you know, that you're hearing about, um, and also share the information, but together, right. It's not just enough to just share a fact with, for most people. All right, Jennifer, you want to keep hearing it? Write it make the video, make the court, whatever it is. I don't care what it is. <laughs> Put in a song, right? I don't, it doesn't matter. Like we've heard some slam poetry that is like life-changing in terms of like content and education and like understanding of how this plant feels in your body and what it's actually doing. I don't care how you do it. Just do it. We've, it's now's the time because we've seen how many times this door has gotten slammed and we can't be naive enough to think that we're like, so far ahead that there's no way in hell that anything can happen. I, after reading this book, I just can't right now. Okay. Like I just can't live under the, like, no, we're good. Like we're not, we can't rest on laurels at this point. Like we've come a really long way, but we've also seen how easy it is to stuff this back in the bag and put it under the rug and demonize it and villainize it. And everyone who's attached to it, everyone who says anything about it and to tell my police officer, if I see a joint in my house, that my mom wants to smoke. That shit is fucked up and it can happen again. So we need to, the more people that know about this in whatever way, and the more we can really build this narrative that not only is it not dangerous, not only is it not scary, it's super beneficial, it's very safe, it's an incredible thing, it's incredible for the planet at large, go Jack Herrera style, it's like, is save the fucking world kind of shit here. Um, you know, like <laughs> we really need for, a lot of buy-in for that to make sure that the door doesn't get slammed. And that's our job, you know, like to get people invested in that. All right. Sorry. I need water. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Go do it. <laughs> um, Corinne, there's a rumor that you're going to sing that you have a ukulele song about uh, cannabis history. I don't have of presenting kind of uh, information. <laughs> I'm going to do it next time we all meet together. I will. I have one about the bullshit cannabinoids that I've been working on. <laughs> come on, <laughs> I'm come sorry, on, come on. I'll work on a history one, but <laughs> yeah, well, let's hear the cannabinoid one. I don't remember it. I, it's on, it's on my voice notes. I gotta, I gotta write it down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work all on right. it. I'm we'll working gonna let on you slide. We'll let you slide this time, but not next time. It's twice in a day. You guys are intense. All right. <laughs> Because we saw your ukulele, like you're holding it on your lap, like people have cats on their lap, you know, they don't want people to know on Zoom meetings that they're petting their cat. And you're like literally holding a ukulele and then we all saw it and then you tried to hide it and then you played a note from it. It was amazing. You teased us. You teased yeah. us. So we're holding you two next month. <laughs> Honestly, it was warm like a cat. I'll be honest. <laughs> now that I don't know, it's silly. <laughs> John and Diane, do you want to close us out with some final thoughts here? If, if, if I might raise a couple of things. One is, you know, we still have, we, we've made tremendous progress. And I too, as, as Corinne just said, I, I'm very, very concerned about the pendulum swing. And I, I'm concerned that there are materials that are so strong out there that that people are going to downregulate their their receptors, and it, it it's going to be seen as not the healthy thing that it could be. That's one of my concerns. The power structure is still there. The fact that we, you know, I mean, I tried. I, I wrote 
And I, I even had an interview with somebody at USDA when they were doing the hemp rule. And I was like, you cannot, the 0.3 means absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing. So if you have 20 to 25 to 30 times the CBD to THC, it doesn't matter what the, what the concentration is. It can't get to the receptor. So it's not a problem. Do you think they cared? No. Do you think there's any goddamn reason in the world why somebody that has a felony should not be it? a felony in their history shouldn't be able to grow hemp for, for a product. No, I mean, there's no, no reason in the world. And yet you cannot, you still can't get, you cannot get the power structure to, to open up. So those are the two things that I'm still angry about. And, um, and I, I will continue, you know, and at least my representative has a bill in, in the Congress to make it 1%, which would make, it would increase the sustainability of the production system. You, you wouldn't have to grow, you know, you could, you could grow a third as much and get the same amount of product if we did it the right way. So if you think about it, so if you, if you, could, if you were trying to generate X amount of CBD on an acre of land and you could have it be 1% and still, or up to 1% and still be legal, then you wouldn't have to have three acres. You could do it on one if you, if you had to have, if you, if you could only have a third of a percent, right? That's my, that's my logic there. Yeah. But more than that, it's like, it's so much better of a medicine if it has 1% THC in it versus just a trivial amount or what my friend over here from Idaho, Diane, uh, they don't even let you have that. So, but thank you for letting me uh, vent my, my, uh, my anger at that, is still there. And, and, and the last thing, I, I, I'm surprised my students aren't more outraged. I, I, I don't understand why my students today are not more outraged with what they've, what I've presented to them and how it's just been sat on. And, and, and uh, I don't, I don't know why, maybe, I don't know, but I just put, put that out there, but thank you. John, thank you so much that I don't want to blow past any of that. Cause all three of those things are, I think, things that I, I would love, I know we're getting close to time now. So if anybody has to go, but a couple of things there. Um, and that is that things are still fucked. I think we have to, sorry, this is going on YouTube. We don't believe it, do we? No, oh, well. um, but things are, we got Delta eight, we've got designer cannabinoids. We've got all sorts of weird stuff happening that we don't know. How easy would it for, be for them to be like one person's system just gets all haywire and they go, Nope, none of this stuff is safe and pull the plan along with it again. Like that, this is very concerning to me as well. Also with the high concentrations, with the new ingestion methods that get you to a blood alcohol, con or not alcohol content, but a cannabinoid content that is much higher than it would be with using other methods, right? 300 milligrams edibles even, we're not, you don't even, don't even need to talk about inhalation. Um, you know, especially for young people, right? Because then, then the narrative starts all over again, right? When people do start exp experiencing mental uh, illness at a higher percentage, and we are starting to see that these higher percentages of THC are impacting these systems in negative ways. So it is possible for the narrative to shift back. Um, and our narrative is super nuanced. We have to be good at what we do. We have to be able to talk about this in a way that we're like, okay, it's, we're not going willy nilly, like everything's all good. Like go to your dispensary and just go get something, whatever it is, you know, we have to really be there to guide that conversation. And that piece about people not being outraged enough, I think is also again, our job. You know, I, 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 I'm just, again, I'm going back to the story because it happened yesterday, but I walked into my mom's house and I started the Elvis, you know, tirade. And she's like, well, well, well. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, hang on a second. Let's hear some more for this. And then by the end, everybody's just like, oh no, you know, like, and, and then they did this with this and they buried this cancer research and these herbs are really helpful. And everyone was chiming in with all these other injustices, um, you know, and, and buried information. And so I think it's like kind of not poking the bear, but kind of, you know, like, like, oh, does that not, not get you? How about this? How about this? What about this? What if this were to happen to you or your grandma? Or what if, you know, like it is happening to people still right now. And I think that's the piece is when we talk about it as history, I think we're still discounting what happens. Like that was when everybody turned. I was like, mom, everybody, people are still going to prison still for small amounts of cannabis in this country, disproportionately black and brown people. 
that is still happening to a, a crazy disproportionately, right? Insanely disproportionately for how many white cannabis users there are. And, you know, like, I think that's the piece, right? It's still happening. We all need to be present and accounted for as we move forward, because we all have to have a voice in it, not going backwards and also going forward in a way that doesn't suck, you know? Um, we're having a talk at CCI for those of you, um, who join us at CCI next Thursday, um, Takesha is doing an open conversation. Where we're going to talk about restorative justice and how we can really incorporate this into our work as coaches. Um, all of us, you know, because it's all hands on deck time. We have to really be doing this work every single day. Um, so thank you so much, Don. I really appreciate you. And thank you so much for being in your community and in universities and talking to university kids about the well, kids and adults and everybody about this. Um, because it's just super, super awesome. We love that you're here. Thanks, John. Thanks. All right, Diane, you're going to take us out. Yeah, so um, ditto, ditto, John and Corinne. I mean, the whole energy of this, I'm going to have to go for a run, and I don't run, so this is going to be fun. Um, just get it out of my system. But um, listening to everything, it's like, we need some documentary peeps out there. You know, we need to who do we know, start reaching out. And I don't know, this is such a great group, the whole tribe that we gotta find somebody to, you know, light a fire under them and, and get it going. Um, so, and also I just wanna say, I'm probably gonna watch this recording over and over and over again, just so I can, I don't, I will never lose the fire, but I just wanna see everybody again. And, you know, when you're out there and people are telling you, no, 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 you don't know what you're talking about and come back and say, know if I'm in the right place, that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, the other thing I want to say is remember um, our weed mom, author, Danielle. So um, she has a friend. I don't know if you can see this. It's Home Baked by Aaliyah Bowles, B-O-L-Z. And this is a friend of Danielle's, lives in San Francisco. I'll put it in the chat. Um, so she recommended this book to me. And I read it and I emailed Aaliyah because I'm a stalker that way. But um, if you want another book to read, I know we're not doing a book club next time, but it's, it's called My Mom, Marijuana and the Stoning of San Francisco. Her mom was originally, before Brownie Mary, she was the one making brownies and delivering them in duffel bags throughout San Francisco in the 60s. And it is a, it's a fun read but it's, it's all about that specific history in San Francisco. I mean, she knew Harvey Milk. She was there when all this happened. And so if you guys are looking for another book that isn't as heavy as some of the stuff we like to read, the nerdy stuff, this one's really good. So I'll pop it in here. And, um, and yeah, I'm just recommending that. And power to everybody. Thank you for, you know, being here and and i'm grateful to be part of every group that that is going on the same journey i really am thank you thank you diane thanks for being part of our community thank all of you um for being here today and being part of this community and and really having this desire to continue to learn and to really be outspoken about this plant um, it's beautiful. I know some of you have been students with us for a long time. Some of you have just joined us, you know, some of you have come out of the ethers and into book club. Um, and we just really, really appreciate you all being here and putting your time to this. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry because it's last book club. And we, I, I have to make a sad announcement after all of this amazing stuff, um, is that we're putting study club and book club on hold for a while. So we're, you know, we're focused. We've got a new cohort. Andrew and I are very committed to um, continuing to share this work through our individual businesses at Reveal and at Wake and Bake. Um, we're going to dedicate some time towards that and we're reimagining what we're doing here. So we would also love feedback for, from you guys. Some of you have come to every single study club, every single book club, every single Q&A. We've seen you all at all of the things. Um, we'd love to know what you what you really loved about it, what you like about these things. What are your favorite parts? Do you like Q&As, book clubs? Do you like that mix of things? Um, and we're going to reimagine it so that we can, again, attract a bigger audience because it is awesome. We love hanging out with you guys. And we also like need to figure out ways that we can get this work out 
out and out and out and out because, you know, we all need to be, everybody needs to be learning about this stuff. So we want to make it a little less just CCI, you know, us all hanging out with each other again and more about the general public and how um, we can really mobilize them and poke the bear and all of them to get angry, to get educated, to like really start working towards helping other people this plant you know, and, and everybody's called to it in a different way. A lot of you are educators. Some of you are providers of plant medicine. Um, some of you just came to this because you wanted to know more for yourself or have come into this work for that reason. Um, and they're all really beautiful, um, but we really, really got to be serving. Um, and I think you all know why we've all seen why in this book. Um, I, I don't need to tell you guys why um, you're here. So Christy said, let's poke, poke some fucking bears. Everybody write your books. Take this time while we're on hiatus. We're going to be emailing you as soon as we're back on knowing Andrea and I, it won't be as long as the two months probably will be back because we love you guys so much. Um, but start working towards it. We want to check in with you guys when we come back and, and see like these aren't these, these things that we do here and that we do in CCI, they aren't just for us to keep for ourselves, right? How are we going to get out there and start doing this work and, and do maybe a little more than we were doing before. Give it a little bit more of an edge, say something that maybe is a little scary that people do need to hear. Um, we would, we can't wait to see what you guys create and love you. And thank you so much for being here. And I haven't cried. <laughs> Andrew, would you like to say goodbye? Oh yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah. But if you want to join us in the meantime, and you haven't already, um, we have CCEP again. Uh, if you start, you, if you start now, you start now, um, as soon as you sign up, you go into the program. It includes the eight week cannabis science educator with Andrea, a little bit of mindset work with Nikki Wells about kind of building the business and about stigma in particular and how to work with that and yourself and others. And then we also teach you the business building tools and we show you how to make content for YouTube podcasts, blogs, webinars, whatever it is that you want to be doing. All righty. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming, everybody. We will see you back here. She's right. Not too long. We, we not, can't stay away either. <laughs> can't stay away. We're going to just make it more awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thanks okay. everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.